This video is the second about the writing process. In this video, we will continue to discuss the writing process, introducing the research process and getting started with your writing using brainstorming. As you remember from the first video on the writing process, we can break down the process into three broad areas, planning, drafting, and revising. The focus for this video is to highlight getting ready for the for conducting your research and working on your outline in preparation for getting your writing started. The details of the research process will be covered in a subsequent video. As you prepare to do your research, you must think about the questions you are asking. Avoid using overly simple questions or questions to which the answer is obvious. You want to choose questions that, that allow you to argue something or prove something. In a research essay, you must have a question or a topic for which there is scholarly research. If you choose a topic that is really too new to recent or that requires a more opinion-oriented approach, you will have trouble meeting the requirements of a research essay. In most university courses, you will be required to write research essays of some sort. Depending on the level of the course and the professor, you may need anywhere from five scholarly sources to 50 scholarly sources or more. As you progress through your university program, expectations regarding the level of research, the type of research question and argument, and critical analysis will increase. It's important to develop strong research skills and good habits now, and to maintain those habits. In other words, take what you learn in this course and apply the techniques and skills to all your courses. The process of coming up with the right questions may take place in the form of brainstorming or free writing. Once you've come up with some ideas about your topic and questions to ask, then you need to look critically at those questions. Will they allow you to achieve the right kind of depth or deep thinking about your topic? Is there adequate scholarly research so that you can find information that you will need to write your essay? This will require some preliminary research to ensure that you can find the appropriate scholarly sources. Once you are satisfied with your questions, you can start your research. After you have collected your research using scholarly sources, you must evaluate your sources. A certain amount of evaluation will occur as you are conducting the research. For example, you'll always be asking, is the source appropriate for your topic? Who is the author and what is our credibility and our credentials? What, or does the argument in your source make sense? Once you have done so, you need to interpret your findings. What does it all mean? Do you have the information to answer your questions? Does your original argument still make sense or do you need to revise your outline and, arg or, and argument or thesis? I'm going to show you this detailed flowchart again. Um, we, see, we saw this in another one of the other videos. And we're focusing here on that first stage, defining the research problem. Now, as you can see, the general sequence is the same as what we've just been talking about. You define the research problem. In other words, ask the right questions. To get to the right question, you must narrow the topic. A topic that is too big, for example, the history of World War II, will lead to a superficial essay because you will not be able to achieve the right kind of depth. You can use a mind map to help you organize your thoughts and direct your research. Then you can create a problem statement. The problem statement is basically the same as an argument, a thesis statement, or a research question. Write your thesis statement or argument down and refer back to it regularly while you are researching and writing, just to make sure you're staying on track, that you haven't gotten your, your original idea mixed up. The next step is to identify and collect your sources. Remember that the bulk of your sources must be peer-reviewed scholarly sources. Oh. <clears throat> you should have a variety of books and journal articles written by a variety of authors. Make use of the university library for both books and journal articles. If you're having trouble finding sources, consult with a research librarian. They are there to help. Use the internet, but use it wisely. You can spend a lot of time searching the internet with minimal results. Most of what you find using Google or other search engines will not be scholarly sources. So it's much more efficient to use the library databases once you've learned how to use them. Once you have a list of possible sources, you will have to evaluate and then analyze them. Be aware of the difference between a scholarly source and a popular source. 
A scholarly source is one that has been reviewed by experts in the field before being published. Of course, this is still no guarantee of accuracy, but it is the best method that we have. As you evaluate your sources, consider questions of accuracy. For example, what size sample did the researcher use? Questions of authority, i.e. what credentials and credibility does the author have? Objectivity, is the article based on research or opinion? What biases are there? Look at currency, how recently was the art research completed? Some older articles, for example, may be classics and can still be used. Others may be used to provide historical context. But if you are examining the impact of the internet among high school students today, would you use an article or book published in 1990? Probably not. Also look at coverage. For example, how broadly applicable are the findings? Was it a small case study or a large scale study that spanned a long period of time with many participants? As you are evaluating, analyzing and interpreting your sources, you should be watching for similarities and differences between your sources, as well as their strengths and weaknesses. In other words, read them critically and ask questions while you're doing so. As I suggested earlier, you will need to kickstart your writing. Sometimes this will be easy, other times not so easy. There are different techniques for doing this, some of which you may already be familiar with. Brainstorming and free writing involve writing ideas down as they come to you. Brainstorming is often done as a random listing of ideas that are later organized in other ways. Free writing is simply starting to write in sentences as the ideas come to you. Sometimes this is called stream of consciousness. With free writing, you don't worry about grammar or organization or spelling. That part comes later, after you get some ideas down on paper, so that you have somewhere to start. Clustering or mind mapping is the style that is like the bubbles connecting from a central idea and connecting between each other. I'll have an example in a minute. A subject tree or planning outline tends to be much more linear. You can find lots of examples of different techniques online. I'll show you two types now, the web or mind map and the KWL method. With the web or mind map method, you start with your main idea or argument, then you branch out to your secondary ideas or points, then you make note of the evidence that support those ideas. Sometimes evidence can be used to support more than one idea, as the lines indicate. With the KWL method, you start by making lists of what you already know about your topic and what you want to know. Then you go out and do your research, following the guidelines we've discussed earlier. After you've done your research, you fill in the third column, what you have learned. Once you've filled out the chart, you check back. Have you found supporting evidence for what you already know? Have you answered what you want to know? And has the research you've done met the needs of your project? You may find that you need to do more research to fill in holes. The method that you decide to use will depend partly on preference. Everybody thinks in different ways. But it also will depend on how big your project is. Some methods are better for large projects and for small projects, sometimes it doesn't matter quite so much. So in this video, we have focused on more details about the writing process, especially kickstarting the writing process using different techniques. Using these techniques will help you to become more organized um, earlier. And the more organized you are at the beginning of your writing, no matter how you are writing your essay, no matter whether you're writing, uh, writing an essay for school or a report for work, the easier it will be to produce a well organized and well thought out document. Thank you for listening.